Last month, trombone shorty and 10 kids with his foundation performed at the Havana Jazz Festival, all to showcase the music that has made New Orleans famous. It was also a learning experience for the kids who got to exchange culture with Cuban musicians. Our Eric Paulson was on the trip and shows us just how music connects New Orleans to the rest of the world. This is the Amadeo Roldan Music Conservatory in Havana, a prestigious Cuban school of music. And on this day, the kids here are hosting some high schoolers from New Orleans with the Trombone Shorty Foundation, most of whom are on their first trip outside of America, and they get how important this is. Us and Cubans, really gotta, our music and our beat is the same, so I'm really, I'm really, they, they, get, they get a lot out of this, they have fun. But this is an opportunity of a lifetime. Oh yeah. All right, yeah, well congratulations, you guys are awesome. Good representatives of New Orleans. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. What do we say now? <laughs> the New Orleans and Cuban students speak different languages, but when the Cuban students invited the Trombone Shorty Academy kids on stage, there was no need for interpretation here. This will be the beginning of a week filled with music, cultural exchanges, and new friendships between New Orleans and Havana. A trip that all got started with a chance meeting between Tony Sylvester with the Gia Prima Foundation and Susan Sillins, who runs the Horns to Havana program. So we met at this restaurant and Susan told me what she had been doing for many, many years, bringing horns here. And I got on a phone called Bill Taylor with Trombone Shorty Foundation and said, I just met a wonderful woman and what she's doing sounds fun and let's do something together. And so you thought the cultural exchange would be magic here? Take a look, it's, it is magic. This is the first of kids coming down to us. The Trombone Shorty Academy, we're so proud of them, have come because of Tony and Gia Prima Foundation. Reynaldo Rusial. One of the highlights at the school came when Trombone Shorty gave some of the Cuban students new instruments. After that, Shorty was back on stage holding a class for some of the students at the school. At that moment, the bond between New Orleans and Havana was sealed in the language they all shared, music. That's it. This cultural exchange between New Orleans and Havana was more than just the students from two countries meeting and sharing music. This trip also included some well-known New Orleans musicians, the Soul Rebels, Tank and the Bangas, Big Chief Monk Boudreau, Anders Osborne, and Trombone Shorty, all to bring New Orleans music to the Havana Jazz Festival. And having so many New Orleans musicians in Cuba at one time brought out press from around the world. We were the only New Orleans news team invited to come along on this journey called Getting Funky in Havana. It's completely worth it. You know, everybody here in this room is, is worth whatever we went through. I mean, once you just get outside the airport and you smell the air and you see the people and you see the cars. <laughs> that night at the Teatro Nacional, a packed house got to hear from the Soul Rebels as they headlined their first show ever in Havana with the trombone shorty students and members of one of Cuba's hottest bands, all coming together for a true New Orleans Havana experience. The next day, there was a huge second line through the narrow streets of La Habana Vieja, Old Havana, which is kind of like our French Quarter. This is beautiful. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world to experience this here in Cuba. This is New Orleans Second Line meets Cuban conga. Yeah, definitely the meetings of the cultures here. And uh, we got the Cuban musicians here jamming out with us like we would do on any given Sunday in New Orleans under the bridge. And, and you got your kids here doing it? We this? got the kids here from the foundation playing the Second Line along with the Soul Rebel Brass Band helping us out. And it's just a beautiful thing that we can't, it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> It was more than just special, it was historic. Havana had never seen anything quite like this before. The 
second line wound through the streets of Old Havana, picking up more and more people along the way. Then came the meeting of the second line and the Cuban conga. With New Orleans' own Sharice Harrison Nelson in bright yellow, Big Chief Monk Boudreaux and the conga dancers all melding together in a symphony of sound and unity. And for that moment, all was right in the world. Two cultures came together with music as a common bond. The sharing of cultures without politics. But in this day and age, it's hard to escape the political climate from both America and Cuba. The next day, there was a headline in the New York Times that read, quote, Festive New Orleans conga in Havana defies Trump Cuba policy. A clear reference to President Trump rolling back the easing of relations with Cuba, which were opened by President Obama. At a news conference on the day of the headline, we asked Bill Taylor with the Trombone Shorty Foundation if that was the case. Did you bring these kids down here for a cultural exchange to defy or despite U.S. policy? For us, coming to Cuba, was it wasn't political, it was cultural. That historically, despite the political differences between our two countries, one thing that has not changed is our mutual appreciation for each other's music, its culture, and its people. That night at a packed concert hall in Havana, there was no talk of politics. The Cubans in this audience were here to listen to Tank and the Bangas headline their first ever major show in Cuba. And they did not disappoint. The next night though, at an intimate concert for a group of people who helped make this trip possible, there was a message about the political climate in both countries when Anders Osborne and Cuban legend Carlos Varela sang a song about building doors, not walls. Cuba for the New Orleans musicians on this trip was almost over, and the bond between these two cultures was set in stone. Boy, the band had got happy, y'all. <laughs> On this last night at a big outdoor concert venue, thousands of Cuban music fans came to see a show featuring all the New Orleans musicians and Cuban music sensation Sima Funk play on the same stage, performing a song that united two cultures through a language we all understand, music. Eric Paulson, Eyewitness News. Tomorrow night, Eric looks at the challenges of traveling to Cuba, and while it's not too hard, it sure is pretty complicated. Eric will explain tomorrow night at 10 o'clock.